Okay, well, we're over here now. We're going to talk more about the Amanda Knox trial. Of course, as you know, later today she will arrive back here home in the States after four years fighting for her freedom. But we want to talk more about the case and why it took so long for her to get back home. So with us here we have got Tanya Lewis, Ivan La... Lependu. Lependu, thank you. And Abby Mon back here, right? Okay. And they're going to talk about kind of what we saw. The first question we want to ask you for these lawyers here is the Italian appeals court overturned the conviction due to faulty DNA. So kind of talk to us about how DNA plays such an important role and why they got it so wrong there in that Italian court. Well, um, basically, as you are aware, um, DNA is scientific evidence that can be used in court to either prove guilt or innocent or is factually it is actually based. Now, in this case, um, an independent review of the DNA evidence was done at the time of the appeal. And that, that review revealed many things about the initial collection of the DNA that was faulty. For example, um, the, the investigators waited 46 days to collect DNA from the residents. Um, so there were certain, certainly issues with cross-contamination and issues with um, chain of custody. Well, they even had a knife they said was Amanda's DNA, but it turned out to be rye bread. So how do they get it so wrong? Is it just because it was so faulty? Or do you want to take, take it from there for us? Uh, I'm going to have to defer to my colleagues. Okay, to well, my keep, keep going. Oh, do you have it? I think a lot of times prosecutors get DNA evidence and they feel that they have a smoking gun and have the evidence that they need to convict. And that's why it's really important to have multiple experts look at the evidence and s make sure that the process is followed properly because otherwise you run the um, risk of wrongly convicting someone with the smoking gun evidence of DNA. We see on all the news shows, um, CSI and all those shows, if you have DNA you have a conviction. But mm -hmm. as this case proves, DNA isn't always the smoking gun that it appears to be. Now how would this have been different if it would happen here in the States? Obviously this happened in Italy, you know, things are done a little differently there, but if this had been handled in the United States, would we have had this four-year period that she was sitting in jail not really guilty? Well, I think that the United States offers uh, more protections than, or different protections than the Italian government does. Uh, for example, when Ms. Knox was first interrogated, she wasn't allowed to have an attorney or a court-appointed interpreter. Um, she was new to, to the country and wasn't yet fluent in Italian. Um, so she basically confessed to something that she didn't quite understand. Mm -hmm. um, when she was finally appointed an attorney, it was the prosecutor. And that is just something that would never happen in the States. Um, here, you are allowed to have your own attorney, you're a Mirandized, you're given your rights, and she was never given that, that benefit. Um, the Italian Supreme Court even found that the police violated her civil rights, and here if the court had found that, they would have suppressed some of the evidence, um, particularly the, the alleged confession, mm -hmm. um, but the Italian court system there used that confession uh, against her in her, in her, uh, in her slander trial. Thank you so much. Oh, what I was just going to say, absolutely. You know, I think it's important for us as Americans to be appreciative of our American criminal justice system mm -hmm. because it does afford us so many protections that don't really extend a lot of times beyond the beyond the bounds of the United States. Awesome. Thank you so much to our legal experts. We really appreciate it. And the good news is, Amanda Knox is coming home. Don will send it back over to you.